On November 3, 1984, serial killer Bobby Joe Long abducted and raped 17-year-old Lisa McVeigh in Tampa, Florida. Then after 26 hours of torture, she had convinced him to let her go. In 1984, Lisa decided to kill herself after years of sexual abuse from her grandmother's boyfriend. She had planned to die by suicide and even wrote a goodbye note. But then, a serial killer had kidnapped her. A gun pressed to her forehead. She had decided to do whatever it took for her to survive. She was riding her bike home from a double shift at a donut shop on November 3rd, 1984. She was 17 years old at the time and completely exhausted as she pedalled past the church at about 2 in the morning. Then, someone grabbed her off her bike from behind. Lisa screamed as loud as she could until the gun appeared and he said, shut up or I'll blow your brains out. It wasn't the first time that someone had threatened her with death. She lived with her grandmother due to her mother being a drug addict, so she was unable to take care of her. Living there, she endured three years of sexual assault by her boyfriend and he threatened her with a gun. Lisa realised she no longer wanted to die, but wanted to live, to survive. She told her attacker, I'll do whatever you want, just don't kill me. The attacker tied her up, blindfolded her, and threw her into his car. At this point, she tried to search for any clues that could possibly save her life. First, she used a small open space below the blindfold to see the car. It was a red Dodge Magnum. Later, she would say, I watched a lot of crime shows. You'd be surprised about the survival skills you have when you're in a position like that. The attacker started driving. Lisa was terrified and tracked the minutes that passed, noted that they were driving north and counted every step she took into his apartment. For the next 26 hours, the man repeatedly raped, tortured and abused Lisa McVeigh. She was certain that she would die at any moment. Before he kidnapped Lisa, Bobby Joe Long had already murdered eight women. He would eventually go on to kill two more after he released Lisa. In addition, he had also committed more than 50 rapes. He first began his crime spree in the early 1980s, using classified ads to find his victims. After raping dozens of women, he started killing them in 1984. Then, in November, is where he kidnapped Lisa. While trapped in his apartment, Lisa overheard the news report that she was missing. She choked back screams as he once again threatened to put a bullet in her head. Lisa was certain he would kill her so she left her fingerprints on as many places as she could in his apartment. She hoped that someday police would be able to use the evidence to catch the, her killer. Throughout the time, she made up stories to humanise herself to Bobby. She lied that she had a father who was ill and that she was his only caregiver. After more than a day of torture, Bobby grabbed Lisa and put her back in his car, telling her that he was going to take her back home. He drove her to an ATM and a gas station. He then dropped her off behind a business around 4.30am. He told her to wait five minutes before taking off her blindfold so he could drive away. He said, Tell your father he's the reason why I didn't kill you. Lisa ran through the early morning hours all the way back to her grandmother's house. When she arrived, her grandmother's boyfriend began beating her and accusing of cheating on him. Neither her grandma nor the boyfriend believed her story. Her grandma even told the Tampa police that she was lying about being kidnapped, but the police insisted on investigating. Lisa wanted to make sure Bobby was caught by the police, so she told Sergeant Larry Pinkerton everything that she remembered about her attack. Just days after, she heard a news report about a murder victim in the area. She was convinced that the killer was Bobby. She called up Larry and said, Come get me, there's more I need to tell you. She then recounted her experience to the police again. Larry asked her if she'd like to be hypnotised to help jog any latent memories. But when her grandmother's boyfriend refused to grant her permission, she revealed his abuse to the police which led to his arrest. With one of her abusers in handcuffs, she wanted to make sure Bobby had the same thing happen to him. Placed in a centre for runaway teens, she looked at a photo lineup of potential kidnappers. Since Lisa had briefly felt her attacker's face and also caught glimpses of him Due to the small gap below her blindfold, she successfully identified Bobby in the lineup. She was able to retrace her kidnapper's movement so that the police could track his car down. Just 12 days after her abduction, police had captured Bobby Joe Long. The next year, he was found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to death. He eventually confessed to committing 10 murders. As for Lisa, her life changed for the better. After she aged out of the runaway centre, she moved in with a caring aunt and uncle and took up a variety of jobs. In 2004, she signed up for the police academy. She later joined the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office, the same department that had arrested her abductor, and began specialising in sex crimes. In 2019, the state of Florida executed Bobby Joe Long. Lisa McVeigh not only witnessed the execution, but sat in the front row wearing a shirt that read, Long Overdue. 
She said I wanted to be the first person he saw, but unfortunately he never turned around. Let me know what you thought of this case and make sure to subscribe and like this video and I'll see you for the next case.